Imagine a world where there are super powerful people called Quasar, who can control a specific chemical element, but to use that power, you need to drink milk straight from the source, if you know what I mean. I'm the Lancelot and in today's summarizing animes we will watch Seiken in Quasar, the story begins with two girls named Tomo and Mafuyu, who are sisters and were praying in a church, when the pink-haired girl remembers that Tomo's father disappeared after leaving a letter to them, he was the former principal of the school where they study and adopted Mafuyu when she was little, running not to be late, they pass by sister Teresa, who is a special transfer student from there, arriving in the room, we see that some people do not like them very much, especially two girls named Hannah and Miyuri, the daughter of the current principal of the school and her evil friend, coming home, Tomo gets distracted and falls on a boy with silver hair who already tries to drink milk straight from the source and is prevented taking a beating of Mafuyu, for having fainted with this, they took the boy to his house and while they wondered if he was a boy or a girl, the boy disappeared, going after him, the protagonist sees smoke coming out of the church and worried about the pictures made by his father, runs out to see what happened, suddenly, a masked woman appears and holds her against the wall, the villain has the power to control the magnesium and demonstrated to know enough of the girl's life, about to be killed, a boy with a red scar on his face appears and protects her, his name is Sasha and even though he was very strong he was powerless, so he had to be saved by Teresa, he's weak from being without, Soma, which is basically the vital energy that all women possess and to be more practical, it's their milk, so with the nun's help, he fills up completely, getting a red eye and causing an explosion, he possesses the power to control the iron in creating a giant scythe, ends up with the villain, the next day, the church was already fixed and she asked the priest with an eye patch who were the quasars, which we do not know if really answered, already in the classroom, a new boy arrived at the school transferred from Russia, his name is Alexander and is 13 years old, in addition to being the same boy they found and who saved Mafuyu the night before, in church, Mafuyu talks with his friend Ayana about Tomo, who is at home with fever, talking to Sasha, she discovers that the villains are behind a special picture and who say they are hidden in that school, while they were arguing, the boy ended up fainting and falling into her lap, remembering the past, we see that he suffered several experiences and that a woman gave his milk to him, waking up in Tomo's lap, Sasha realizes that he was dressed in a feminine outfit and to make him better, Mafuyu made a typical dish of Russia that he loved and outside, Teresa showed up to take him to his dorm, while in the bathroom with her friend, the masked woman appeared and kidnapped Ayana, the villain threatened to cut the girl if the protagonist did not reveal where the painting was, thus, thinking of some words that Sasha had said with her wooden sword, she manages to take off the mask of the woman, revealing that it is Tomo, who begins to hurt Mafuyu saying several bad things about her, however, Sasha appears and attacks Ayana, understanding that in reality, she who was the villain and was controlling Tomo. Sasha regains her power thanks to the nun, while Ayana does the same using Tomo's melons, and to the protagonist's surprise gets very powerful, but leaving him angry, he attacks her, throwing his iron at her, which trying to burn the girl was stopped by him, who oxidized the iron, eliminated the oxygen from the flames and with his giant scythe pierced it, however, she said that it was not yet the end, then set fire to her own body, creating a symbol that conveyed the voice of a mysterious man, who was to blame for the scar on Sasha's face, so, wanting to protect the two, the boy decided that he will live with them, back in the protagonist's memories, he remembered when the golden quasar made the scar on his face and killed a woman important to him, in another day of school, Sasha showed that even though she was only 13 years old she was smarter than all the other students and again the headmaster's daughter on top of him and is totally refused, so the mean girls were again bothering Mafuyu by saying bad things, however, the Russian appeared and groping Miyuri says that her front commission is nothing compared to Tomo's, the scene cuts to a ship, where several armed men entered a room to steal a merchandise that was with a little girl, however, the moment they opened the coffin the girl revealed herself to be a quasar and using a puppet she calls mother kills them all, returning to the city of the protagonists, Miyuri and Hannah were expecting another foreign student, which is called Ekaterina and is the same girl from the ship, they went shopping and Mafuyu's group also decided to do the same, staying alone with Hannah, the girl realizes that the girl is into a loli, then pretends to be faint and the moment she tries to take advantage, 
Ekaterina shows off her true personality, so the sadistic Quasar arranged her, Soma, source to use her powers, while the protagonists discussed, a blonde man showed up with a pamphlet of a missing woman and only leaves after they say they don't know anything, together they go to a lingerie store and the smartass tries to stay in the cabin with them, but is removed by Mafuyu, however, thanks to this, Toma and Teresa were attacked by the seller with a stun gun, returning to the cabin, worrying about the delay of the two, they talk to the woman and he understands everything that happened, making the fake take them to where their friends are, in the basement, some men were recording the two and doing very wrong things, until Sasha arrives and ends everyone, suddenly, a coffin comes out of the ground and Ekaterina appears to battle with Sasha. He asks if she is part of the 12 supporters, the villains who are also Waskars, however, without responding, she attacks them by controlling her puppet, feeding on the nun, Sasha prepares for the fight, but is still stopped by Loli, who holds him and using his copper powers pulls some power cables and shocks him, using a fireman's hose, Mafuyu wets the girl and her puppet, preventing her from using electricity again, but after Teresa asks if this greeting was not enough, Ekaterina decides to leave, leaving the protagonists without understanding whether or not she was an ally, returning to the bad girls, the gothic Loli said that she could not stay at Miyuri's house because they had already chosen where she would live, and by the time Hannah arrived at her home, he faced the girl, who turned her into his servant, Fumika, the leader of the class, tried to give a statement to everyone and again the principal's daughter along with other students began to bully someone weaker, until Mafuyu and Sasha put her in his place, the scene cuts and we see the blonde villain along with another man, who is called Kroa and is also one of the 12 supporters, unlike Sasha, Ekaterina was much smarter and using an object extracts the Soma from Hannah, storing it in a container, the protagonists went to the church, where the priest told everyone about Teresa's past, who lived in a small country in Central Europe and at the end of the Cold War in the 20th century, the country entered a civil war that took the life of her family, so she was sent to an orphanage of a nun named Wilma, where she considered her home and the sisters there her family, until one day, some men appeared there along with the quasar of the chlorine and took the lives of all of them, while Teresa watched hidden in a closet, leaving there, while the three talked, Tomo smelled a pool and suddenly, Kroa appeared and caught her, being traumatized, throwing Cal at the villain, Mafuyu manages to save the two, until Sasha appears and after recharging his energies builds his scythe, but is stopped by the villain, who when mixing chlorine with H20, created hydrochloric acid and began to play on him, suddenly a red shield appears and running with him, Mafuyu protects himself from the acid and draws the villain's attention, giving a gap for the nun to kick him and Sasha cut him in half, we found that that shield was made of copper and it was Ekaterina who threw it there because, unlike iron, this chemical element is not corroded by hydrochloric acid, in search of getting a key to a place where Miyuri's family owns it, Mafuyu will have to work as a maid for the rich girl. Next to Tomo and Sasha, who was also dressed as a maid. We find out that she wants this to get revenge on the protagonist, who, when she was little, made her feel ashamed. The Russian didn't like the idea at all, but after Tomo talked to him, the boy accepted the situation. Ekaterina was also there and is looking to get hold of a specific object, known as the Romanov family eggs. Suddenly, several soldiers appeared to steal the artifacts and other valuables. Also, before Sasha could do anything, he was passed out by one of them. Ekaterina also can't use her copper power because she is without Soma and with everyone tied up, the villains decided to do those horrible things. In particular, this crook with the look of a pervert who went after Sasha and the moment Mafuyu said that he was actually a man, the villain sent this sentence. <laughs> The biggest of the soldiers wanted Ekaterina, but Miyuri protected her, calling her her little sister. Thus, they forced her to do a private show and with Quasar joining her, she managed to extract Soma from her and with her puppet she destroyed almost all the villains. There was only one left who knew about the existence of these powerful beings and after he mentioned the sodium Quasar, Sasha decided to listen to what he had to say. The sodium villain is known as Phoenix and after revealing this, the old soldier blew himself up, causing a destruction, but it did not hit any of them thanks to the protagonist. Which told everyone that this phoenix was together with his enemy in the past, the golden quasar. 
remembering his adoptive father, Mafuyu got the key she wanted and went to the place where he said he kept the most important treasure for him, hoping to be the painting that the villains are looking for. However, Miyuri decided to go along with her, as she really wanted to ride the train and while they were walking through the forest, they found Elio's quasars. By kicking one of them, Miyuri managed to escape and, at Mafuyu's request, ran to get help. With that, the protagonist ended up falling down a slope and passing out, being saved by someone mysterious who burned one of the bald brothers. Meanwhile, Sasha and company went to Ekaterina to find out her friend's whereabouts. Which he said he would only reveal if Sasha kissed her feet. Back in Mafuyu, she was at the home of a girl and a man who tended to her injuries. Their names are Atori and Lizzie and they quickly left the hut to train. After a bath in the river at 2 o'clock, the remaining bald brothers appeared saying they are followers of the Golden Quasar and that they want to become the Twelfth Apprentice. With her sword, Lizzie manages to protect herself from their attacks, until Miyuri appears looking for a signal for her phone. Making a sound as she puts her sword down, the girl asks gently and extracts the rich girl Soma, removing the bands from her sword and using it to obliterate the villains. She is the Titanium Quasar and her sword name is Escalibur. During the night, Mafuyu cooked for everyone and the next day he went to the house to use the key, but when he got there he ran into his friends. Going to the secret room, they found a covered painting and when taking the cloth over it, they noticed a painting of the two when they were little, that their father had dedicated to his daughters. Thus, Mafuyu falls to the ground crying and happy to know that her father really loved her, while Sasha and Teresa realized that two people were there before them, and finding Mayuri they all left. Until the scene cuts to Atori and Lizzie, who ended up finding the blonde villain, who revealed to us that that man is actually Phoenix, the sodium quasar. To Mafuyu's surprise, Atori became the school's new teacher and became a hit with the naughty girls. The scene cuts and we see the blonde villain talking to Quasar from Oxygen about the protagonist. And returning to the main group's house, they made dinner for Atori and Lizzie, where Miyuri and the class representative also showed up to eat. Leaving there, the priest with the eye patch went to talk to Phoenix, saying that he knew that his objective was the special picture that the villains were looking for. In a city alley, Hannah's group of delinquents were harassing a boy, until the Oxygen Quasar appeared and captured her, which only Teresa saw. The next day, Ekaterina received some videos of what he was doing to her, deciding to get revenge. Arriving at school, Sasha found in her locker a letter from a secret admirer and upon reading it, she decided that she would find who sent it. Back on the Oxygen villain, Ekaterina showed up to save her servant and found she didn't stand a chance against him, which completely destroyed her puppet. And when they were about to burn to death, Teresa saved the two with her arrows. Giving them the chance to flee, but being captured instead. Back to the protagonist, he met the girl who had sent the letter, who was crying and asked him to defeat her brother. The girl's name is Aoi and during dinner while he was arguing with Mafuyu, Hannah appeared with an injured Ekaterina. The copper user told Sasha that Teresa was trapped with the villain and Aoi revealed to the girls about her brother. That they both had to go through diabolical training to become quasars and after he received the power, he became a bad person. While they were alone with her in a room, the girl changed her appearance, claiming to be Aoi's brother and about to kill Mafuyu, Sasha appeared and chased him. In reality, when her brother went to extract her Soma, in a final ritual, something happened, her power was released and she ended up killing everyone present, including her brother. Thus, not accepting what had happened, she created a double personality, as if she had him inside her. Battling him, Sasha ends up falling into a hole with Mafuyu, who, seeing him injured and in need of energy, gives him her Soma. At the same time, Ekaterina, already fueled, was ready to join the battle, when she met the priest, who explained that the Soma of fearful and ashamed people are of the best quality, but second only to one, the Soma with love. That way, with all his powers recharged, the protagonist created a sword and did something with it and during the battle of the two, he made it become stainless steel. In reality, he had mixed his iron with chromium and the addition of oxygen made this possible. However, about to put an end to the villain, Mafuyu stopped him thinking about protecting Sasha's feelings about Aoi. Thus, she was taken hostage, 
But with Ekaterina's help, she was saved and with a final blow, the protagonist ended the battle. During the night, while going to the bathroom, the class representative, Fumika, was attacked by a man, but managed to escape. And the next day, Sasha and the others went out to look for this bad person, while Tomo stayed home alone. Thinking she was useless for not helping them, she decided to make them dinner, but ended up letting the pot burn. However, before splashing water and causing massive damage, the mysterious man the protagonists were after appeared and erased him with his cape. Well, in case you didn't know, you shouldn't erase anything that has oil with water. Giving her a lecture for this and seeing that she is not good at cooking, she made dinner for her, which she liked so much that she ate it all herself. He was looking for a girl named Akari, but in reality what was written on the paper was Tomo. His name is Joshua and he is also a quasar, who was trying to make Tomo feel ashamed and afraid, failing miserably in both attempts. In this way, he untied her and told her about his reality. He is the quasar of Rentgenium, an element that is not natural to Earth and because of this he was considered by others as useless. Cutting to the protagonist and the others, they ended up feeling a quasar nearby, and for that, Sasha went after him, having a clash of power with Lizzie, who ran away without showing who she was. Tomo told the boy that she would like to die to stop being a burden to her friends, however, after receiving a moral lesson from him, everything is fine. So the others arrive and think he's the freak that's been walking around, making him run out the window. The next day, they went to school, while Tomo stayed home because he had a fever. In the classroom, again the bad girls bullied a weaker person, who this time was the class representative. But thanks to Mafuyu and Sasha, they kept quiet, where we learn that Fumika likes the protagonist and took a knife for himself that he had made to help a cat. While incinerating the garbage, two girls with pink hair appeared and before they could harm the girl, Sasha and Teresa arrived and it turns out they are Mercury users. And not being able to fight them properly, the protagonist was saved by Ekaterina, who revealed that the two are just bait and the real quasar of Mercury is elsewhere. So, the girl told him to go there, while he would take care of the two. Returning to the classroom, Fumika bumped into a woman who was terrorizing all the students. When the villain began to pester the class representative, Mafuyu took his sword to protect her and with the knife she had taken from Sasha, the girl managed to cut the quasar's face. And about to die because of it, the protagonist appeared and saved her. In this way, the protagonist used Fumika to supply his power in lowering the temperature of his iron, froze the villain's mercury and with her power he defeated her, burning the mercury witch. However, the two twins ended up running away. After these events and with many witnesses, the priest invented a super story to explain everything, that the Russians knew about some terrorist attacks that would happen in Japan and that's why he sent two special agents and one of them was Sasha. Classmates didn't like the way the two treated Mafuyu and Tomo, so they went to apologize to them and the next day, the protagonist became a celebrity in high school. Being happy for all the attention, but also annoyed that he wouldn't be left alone. During the afternoon, Mafuyu was kidnapped and together with Teresa, Sasha went to the meeting place, seeing that the same villain was resurrected. Apparently, she used her servants, who are a kind of Mercury clone to rebuild her body, leaving only one. Even though she was superior to the protagonist, they used Mafuyu as a hostage and made them let her hit them. Until Ekaterina appeared and when the clone was about to hurt the protagonist, someone burned her completely. In this way, she was released and coming to her beloved, she gave her Soma to him, who got up in great anger. And in a superior way than before, she managed to manipulate the iron present in her blood and with a kind of new transformation, she cut the villain in half, falling to the ground shortly afterwards. After everything that happened, Sasha woke up with no memory of who he was and to annoy him, Ekaterina told a lie, that he was actually a girl, but because of a curse, he became a boy. That way, everyone went to a special place that is basically a bathroom in a fanservice episode, where everyone is without clothes and nothing is done. Until a giant woman appears, her name is Nakuma and she is their cult's strongest strategist. She analyzes the commission head-on for each of the girls and in the end it's practically no help. Back in town, while Sasha was about to get caught by some bandits, a masked heroine appeared and saved him. 
In reality, she is Miyuri in disguise and in possession of a special object, which is giving her powers. Like the last episode, this is also a giant filler with a lot of fanservice, and in short, she becomes a famous heroine, so Ekaterina and Hannah also join in the fun, in addition to Sasha becoming her sidekick. However, because she was playing with dangerous powers, the priest with the eye patch ordered the copper quasar to deal with her. A super battle ensues and they pretend to be villains, ending with a final fight and a mysterious man appearing. He removed the seal that gave her powers and when he was about to get something shameless, he was beaten up by another girl, who took him away. Returning to the main story, Sasha was having nightmares about her past and was still without memories, thinking she was a girl in a boy's body. Walking confused through the city, he ended up bumping into a girl, who thought he was very cute and wanted to force him to enter her store, however, Lizzie saved him, but the girl did not give up, making a request to them. Inside, both dressed in different ways, doing cosplays for some customers and meanwhile, the other girls were behind Sasha and alone in an alley, Teresa and Tomo found someone. Back to the protagonist, they were close to having fun together as a trio, but suddenly, someone shot them. Seeing a firefight, Mafuyu went to investigate, while Lizzie understood that they were facing the lead quasar. In this way, Lizzie supplies herself and takes her super sword to protect herself, however, not being able to withstand so many shots, it breaks. Seeing this, something happens to Sasha, he starts to remember things and when Lizzie was about to be hit, the protagonist gets up and protects her. Making a viscous shield, Sasha stops all the bullets and sending them back manages to hit him, then with a final blow he finishes him off. Seeing that she too was a quasar, he remembers the person he had met in the forest and prepares to fight, but Mafuyu appears and interrupts them. Still alive, the lead quasar tried to shoot the protagonist, but before he succeeded, he was burned alive by the sodium user, who was with Teresa and Tomo. Sitting on a throne, Lizzie asked him why, since girls were always kind to him, but quickly, he told her to be quiet and obey her orders. While arguing with the priest for what happened, Ekaterina appeared and explained what happened, with her sodium powers Utori is controlling Teresa. Furthermore, he stole a special golden egg, and its level is far above Sasha's. During the night, the protagonist told Mafuyu about his past and about the woman who protected him until his death by the golden quasar, and that the sodium quasar was with him. Finding out where the villain is, Sasha stocked up with the soma of his beloved and after finishing, she tricked him and ran to the place. Back at Utori, he revealed that he loves Lizzie and sent her to face Sasha. Suddenly the mysterious blonde appeared and with the clones of the adepts who had died, they decided to teach the traitor a lesson, who defeated them with an explosion. At the same time, the protagonists had arrived and Mafuyu entered the church worried about her sister. There, Utori explains that he had made a promise with Tomo's father and with a special sword, he will kill the blue-haired girl. Which ends up getting up and with a completely different personality, it turns out to be the golden quasar. In reality, his spirit just possessed Tomo and is now more powerful than ever, having a gigantic stockpile of Soma. Utori's plan was to use those relics to kill the villain, which ended up not working out. Outside, Sasha defeated Lizzie and took pity on her and Teresa, who she was protecting. Thus, he enters the church and the final battle begins. Cause we want retribution! Oh yeah, we want retribution! Oh yeah, we want retribution! After taking a beating, Sasha remembers when Mafuyu helped him and once again entering his new transformation, defeats the Sodium Quasar. In this way, Utori dies in front of his beloved and the protagonist saves her from being buried under some rubble. Thus, the Golden Quasar makes fun of him, calling him Lalakan and seeing his gauntlet, Sasha realizes who it was. Before the villain could get away with it, Ekaterina shot her several times, destroying the egg. Lizzie manages to free Mafuyu, who with a hug made Tomo come to his senses and because of that, 
the mysterious blonde ran away with her to complete the resurrection. We are shown two young men who were training with some monks and we see that various places in the world received news that something was happening. At school, we see that the two young people are the new students there and they are called Mitsumi and Taisuku. Sasha already knows her and we discover that both have a past together, in the past, she was his Maria, that is, from whom he extracts Soma. Taisuku appears doing something silly and takes a hit from her friend. Incidentally, because of his promiscuity, he was also beaten by the school representative and left in pain in that place. As Sasha thought about that odd pairing, we realized that she has something off about their new teacher. Walking around, the protagonist saw the representative in danger and decided to help her, facing some teleporting hands. Climbing onto the roof, he saw that she was just an ordinary person manipulating an elemental circle. Looking back, Taisuku was there and ready to fight Sasha. Mafuyu was talking to the school nurse, until Mitsumi appears and says that there was a mess and they needed her, making her leave the room. Alone, the girl holds Mafuyu and begins torturing her, until with a scream, she calls out to Sasha and pushes the girl away. Back on the roof, the protagonist found it strange that the boy was also able to control metallic objects and after feeling that Mafuyu needed him, the real fight was about to begin. The scene cuts and we see that Tomo was with several scientists in a kind of laboratory. Returning to the roof, Sasha managed to knock Taisuku down and discovered that his real ability is the power of magnetism. Going to where Mafuyu was, the protagonist discovered some new tattoos on her arm, which means that she has the power of Maria's sword inside her body. Back at Tomo, she's reunited with Joshua and he's basically the butler for the adepts. A small girl named Astarte ended up entering her room and together, they walked through the adepts' mansion. The little girl said that she would show a way out of there and after walking a little, they arrived at the top of a tower, where we saw that they were on an island. The little girl almost fell from the top, being saved by Tomo and said that she also wants to run away, because in her entire life, she had never left there. That way, they agree to leave together and when they hug, they end up falling and being saved by a man named Dukan. Returning to the villains, we discover that Joshua is Jida's older brother and that she is the carbon user. After another of the adepts speak ill of her older brother, she goes after him, where both fight and their leader appears. He planned to punish Jida for starting that and close to taking a fatal blow, Tomo saves her by stepping in front. A state tells them to stop and we discover that in fact everyone there calls her godmother, as she is the most important Maria of the adepts. They become friends and spend the next few days together, which was recorded and sent to the protagonists. However, in her room during the night, the golden quasar appeared in her body, saying that the promised day was near. Trying to find some clues in Tomo's father's documents, Sasha ends up falling asleep while working. The scene cuts to school, where Miyuri is inviting everyone to her birthday for Ekaterina. Going to the infirmary, the protagonist discovers that she is also part of their sect and to be sure of this, he tries her Soma. They talk for a while and she reveals that she is a friend of Tomo's father, thus giving him a book. On her birthday, Ekaterina's classmates give her a wreath and when everything seems to be going well, a monster appears and destroys everything. He takes Miyuri's Soma against her will, where we discover it is Lizzie and goes after Mafuyu, who with her mysterious power stopped him. Ekaterina tries to fight, however, ends up getting a beating and her puppet is completely destroyed. That way, close to being killed, Sasha appears and quickly faints the titanium quasar. Leaving there upset, the Russian finds their suspicious teacher, who is a European terrorist and offers the special egg, until the golden quasar appears. With the book she had won, Sasha opens a secret passage in the church and tells Mafuyu that the lake near the school holds a secret. At the same time, Hannah is trying to cheer up Ekaterina, who is very irritated and disappears. Cutting to the adept's secret base, they finally decided to act and were ready for war. Using a boat, the protagonists look for something, until Sasha enters the water. The supporters arrived in the city drawing a lot of attention and Mafuyu ended up going into a dream and needed Sasha's help to wake up. Going to the market, she ends up finding Hannah, who was lamenting the disappearance of Ekaterina and looking to her side, she sees Tomo, 
who was actually the professor in disguise, who teleported her to another location. Mitsumi and Taisuku started to follow some supporters they saw and after stocking up on Soma, the boy starts the fight, but apparently, they don't have a chance against them. As Sasha was talking to the priest about the situation, Hannah appeared to tell them what she saw. In this way, the protagonist went alone to face all the supporters, who trapped Mafuyu on a rock in front of the lake. Until Ekaterina appears threatening Mafuyu and demonstrating that she is on the side of the villains. Suddenly, something strange starts to happen to her, her balloons start to grow non-stop, tearing her clothes and the girl starts to extract her soma. Apparently, by having Maria's sword inside her, Mafuyu has the power to concentrate the soma of all women on the planet, becoming the ultimate soma. Some of the adepts were teleported away and the carbon and hydrogen girls were left to fight Sasha. However, Taisuku returned and together with his partner, they decided that they would face them so that the protagonist would save his beloved, but before passing, he will have to fight the leader of the adepts. However, one more ally appeared, Lizzie, who stayed to face the silicon quasar for him to move on. Arriving at the villains, Sasha saw the two extracting Soma from Mafuyu and when the fake teacher was being weird with Ekaterina, Hannah appeared, giving her a kick in the face. Slapping the Russian, she gives the girl a moral lesson and it seems that Ekaterina was about to kill her friend. The scene cuts and we see that Lizzie was close to being finished, but because he felt something, the villain left quickly. Returning to Ekaterina, in reality, she wasn't with the villains and ended up using her puppet to trap one of them. However, he managed to escape and his brother hurt Hannah. When she went to use her power to fight, both ended up self-destructing because they had taken too much Soma and thus, they united, transforming into a giant monster. Lamenting herself for not being able to save her beloved again, Teresa appeared and put Sasha in her place. In addition, she ordered the Quasars present to gather their powers and with a combined blow, they ended the monster. With a drop of his blood falling on Mafuyu's arm, the barrier that protected the sanctuary disappeared and the gold Quasar appeared, bringing with him in a crystal coffin, Olja, the woman who cared for and sacrificed for Sasha in the past and who in the past reality is your sister. Taking them to a place that looked like space, the villain destroys the coffin, bringing his wrath, which activated his blood sword. With everything going according to their plan, the painting they were looking for appeared and several tentacles started to come out of there. Despite fighting together, the two had no chance against her and very angry, Sasha attacked without stopping, which also did not work. Calling the protagonist a son of God, the villain wants Sasha to go to her side. With a lot of effort, he manages to appeal to Tomo to return to her body and extracting his soma, he removes the soul of the golden quasar from within her. Which, about to hit the girl with a golden blade, is stopped by Sasha, who used her body as a shield. Seeing her beloved on the ground close to death, Mafuyu activates a power that returns the frame to normal. With her powers, she manages to heal him and while they were talking about what they would do with the painting, the golden spirit reappears, entering Ekaterina's puppet. Taking the soma of four different girls, Sasha becomes much more powerful and with the help of Ekaterina and Mafuyu, ends up with the evil spirit, which was caught by the tentacles of the painting. Everything returned to normal and the girls returned to school as if nothing had happened. While talking to Teresa, the priest appeared, delivering a message from their sect and saying that they gave him a day off. Having no more important concerns, Mafuyu noticed that her balloons had diminished by one day and going to the infirmary, she discovered that she might not have the great commission ahead that she had achieved. During dinner, Sasha seemed to be very disappointed about something and she thought it was because of her getting smaller. For the remainder of the episode, Miyuri has gotten some equipment for her to grow back and the protagonists go on a date together, where he reveals that he will have to leave. In this way, Mafuyu says that he loves him, so there is a last extraction of Soma and a kiss, where he gives her his necklace and promises that as soon as the next mission is over he will return to her. And in that happy way ends the first season, where we see Hannah and a girl very similar to Sasha, infiltrating a new school. Well guys, that was the summary of the first season of Seiken on Quasar, if you want me to bring the second one, comment below. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel, I hope all is well with you, until next time.